Uh, we're going to bring in Sean Merriman here. We've had him on a couple times. Been an awesome guest to talk all things football. And also, if you watch, you want to watch some great mixed martial arts action this weekend. Uh, it's actually it's coming up, but it's the Lights Out 14. It's on February 16th. Not this weekend. I got my dates wrong. It's next month, but it's coming up on Fubo Pay-Per-View. They have some highlight star-studded main events. And Sean Merriman's here to talk a little bit more about that and the NFL playoffs, the Browns, and much more. So let's welcome in our guy, Pro Bowl all pro, should be a Hall of Famer, Mr. Sean Merriman. Sean, Sean we got to get to it. We got to get to it. I, I want to just come out and say it. Mm. Uh, the news has hit uh, Talia Tungvaloa is uh, in the transfer portal. No, he's, he's, no, the, he's going, he's going to, the to the league. Oh, he they, went to the league? They no, denied the him his uh, six no. years. So, hey, they, so, he's, yeah. he, so he's, he's been out of it. He's got 10 years. Like, I think he's a veteran <laughs> there. Now, here's the thing. Have, have they ever approached you at Maryland? You are a big, you are a big, uh, you know, you know, guy. Philanthropist. Yeah. So have they approached you and, and be like, listen, we, we got this NID, NIL deals. We need a quarterback in here to compete with uh, uh, Ohio State and Michigan. What you doing? I'm cutting a check. Uh, oh, <laughs> hey. Hey. Now, he, see, he, see, he, he, I he's like on record saying he's this. Yeah, Sean, Sean, <laughs> CJ Stroud just wrote a half a milli check to Ohio State. We're not talking six figures, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're talking six figures. I'm, I'm, I told Loxley, I'll, I'll cut him a check, uh, Mike Loxley. Over. You know, I'm a, I'm a Mike Loxley guy. And look, I, I actually believe in what they got going on, right? Oh. Um, and and let's, with the NIL stuff, like, yeah, you're going to have your one or two guys that we're talking about, like the, the massive, massive. But if you're, if you're throwing out 10, 15,000, 20,000 here, you, you can keep some core guys, man. But you have to, in this day and age, you got to have something on the table. Uh, whether people like it or not, whether they agree with it or not, that's just the way things are now, and you ain't getting away from it. Sean, I would think it, it, it's like the that. Under Armour money, right, I at like Maryland. I, I would think that Maryland would be one of the schools that's most likely to emerge in the next 10 years. Where's Boomer? As a as – a, well, I, I'm talking Let's corporate money. I'm talking yeah. Boomer, like, Boomer Siasen. Yeah, but Boomer it's Siasen under, isn't Under Armour it ain't money. Un, it's under Armour. Armour. He's got a lot of money, too. Get under Boomer Armour out there. Right, checks. I would think that Maryland is well positioned. They've got a great coach there. They've got some nice momentum. Now that you can just out and out write checks, and they've got a guy who we know wants this program to be great and on the map, I would think they're well positioned to become one of the teams that was a team that you always knew about and looked at, but I think they can in the in the future become a team that you're like, oh, okay, Maryland's doing it like that. Yeah, but and you know that's you're talking about Under Armour and Kevin Plank and uh, specifically, right? Because right. you know Kevin Plank played football there. Sure. And this is a conversation I had with KP. Man, KP has done so much for the University of Maryland. Man, I'm not talking about just Under Armour. He has done a lot. That new practice facility. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see it or not. I've but heard about it. Ain't it. Nothing, it ain't nothing close to what we played. We played in when I was there, right? Right. Um, and this was something I talked to Kevin Plank about. Man, he can't be the only one. Um, that's doing stuff for the school. And I've that's talked true. to, you know, Vernon Davis, uh, Quayle Jackson, um, a, a lot of us former guys who had, you know, fortunate enough to have a lot of success when we got done. And we're all coming together, putting something together right now um, oh. to jump in because Kevin, because Kevin Plank, man, he's done so much. He can't continue to do everything on his own there. And we got enough guys, man, to had success after we were done. So we, we got something cooking, but we got, we got to play ball, man. We, you know, we're trying to win. So yeah, it is All like right. Phil Knight in Oregon. I mean, when you think about it, it's probably on a smaller scale, but you're absolutely right. What he has done for that school is, is unimaginable. And there's got to be other guys grabbing the rope. Yeah. Sean, on, on a different note, I'm curious here, you know, the AFC championship game, I think we're all fascinated. I, I personally think whoever wins that game is going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, the Ravens have clearly been the best team in football this year. There's no doubt about it. But the Chiefs got Patrick Mahomes. So who are you leaning towards in that? You, you know, typically, man, over the past several years or so, I would I would say this is a layup for Patrick Mahomes. But let's let's be honest, man. They're they're not the same team that they once was, right? They're not as dominant. They're winning, and that's a big part of because of Patrick Mahomes and what he's been capable of doing. Travis Kelsey, he's getting up there in age, but he can still go out there and dish it out. Chris Jones, that dude is that dude is on another level. But right now, the way the Ravens are playing, their brand of football that they're playing, I don't think anybody can beat them. And not just because of their talent. You know, I don't know if you guys seen the other day, um, one of the inside line, I don't know if it was Smith or Queen that came out and said that, I don't care if it's my cousin coming on the field, they're getting dealt with. 
right? Like that, that, that that's the mentality that they have, man. And they're punching people in the mouth. And, and I got to give uh, Houston credit, right? Because first of all, nobody, I don't care who you are, nobody thought that Houston was getting there. No one. And so they made it there and you saw the, the, the levels um, and, and not only just uh, talent, but the level of playing style that they start to beat Houston up towards the end of that second half. Like they just couldn't even take it anymore. And that's how the Ravens are playing football right now. They're playing four quarters and they're going to line up and punch in the mouth. And by the way, there's there's nobody. I would say the Lions maybe. But there's no one else in, in, in the playoffs right now that is more physical than the Baltimore Ravens. Well, I'm glad you brought up that because I need to go to the NFC and I want to ask you mainly about two pass rushers. You know, obviously they got San Francisco got Nick Bosa and the Lions got Aiden Hutchinson, who's doing a really good job. Which one of them do you think makes the bigger impact in their game? And which one of them reminds you of yourself? Because I know me, for I, myself, look, for myself, I'm more of a Nick Bosa guy when I play DN. <laughs> yeah. Shut, shut, yeah. Shut, shut up. Shut up. Look, we ain't going to start this fine morning off by lying now. Come on, <laughs> now, <sweetie. laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Wait, Sean, listen. Hold on. Wait a minute. Sean, let me tell you. When I played in Muni League, I started my career off in Muni League as playing defense to end. I won defense and MVP for my team. I'm telling you. I was in the backfield. Look, I was like Julius Peppers. Tell you it's zero. No, I swear, no, no, no. I said immunity. No, you were like Julius Pepper. I was like Julius Pepper. Yes. I'm telling you, I was around the Listen, tackle we, sacks. We not, we not gonna start off by giving participation See? awards away. All now. Right. That's yeah. All right, all right. I got, uh, now I got to bring the trophy in. Muni League. <laughs> I look. I, I think. Look. I think Nick Bosa is the best pass rusher in football. Um, and and I'll, and it is, uh, you know, I would say uh, Michael Parsons is next, and Garrett, uh, Mike, uh, Miles Garrett. You can kind of go down the line, TJ Watt. And I'm not talking about a big separation. I'm just talking about, you know, incremental amounts. But I think Nick Bosa probably is the best pass rusher in football. I think Hayden, uh, uh, Aiden Hutchison and what he's doing right now, he's making a bigger impact, if that makes it. He's making a bigger impact because he's having these game-changing plays. You look at the end, man. This dude is, is splitting double teams. Um, you know, his, his retrail and retrace and how he chased down the ball, man, he's just – He's always, uh, even when he's not making a play or a sack back there, he's causing a problem in that backfield. So, yeah, I'll, I'll always give it to Nick Bosa. I think Nick Bosa is the best pass rusher in football. But right now, the, the biggest impact is Aiden Hutchinson. Hey, hey, Sean, let me ask you this question about defensive ends because obviously we have Miles Garrett here. And, um, you know, in a, in a championship game, you know, people talk, not championship game, but wild card game, uh, they talked about not having the impact that you want. When I was growing up playing defensive end in college, they you couldn't just – run around blocks hmm. like you had to like they're like oh no you got to deliver hands you got to take it on shed the ball. And, and, and definitely you wouldn't allow running up field and just you just playing the pass today I don't really understand like do defensive beings have run responsibility because I see a lot of guys just swimming just moving inside it no gap integrity like is that the new wave or what, what are we doing now yeah, look, right now, man, everybody know that sacks is money, right? And so you see a lot of these guys flying up the field, and that's why I joke around now that I got 12 to 15 snaps of me because I can run up the field also, right? <laughs> like, you know, now, they, now, they throw a screen or a draw, I'm not changing direction, that's for sure. I'm straight up the field still. Uh, but I think the, the game has changed, right, because they're throwing the ball 65 to 70% 70, 70 plus times during the game, and, and the, the running has – kind of taking a backseat. Back when I was playing, man, we played Kansas City Chiefs, and they would line up in that power set, and they running the ball 30 times. And, you, yeah. and they, don't give a, they don't give a game whether you know that they're doing it or not. They're running the ball with that fullback coming tight down the field, Ooh. that pulling guard. I mean, just all kind of just brutality oh right there. Gosh. And then, then what happened was when they started doing play action off of that form, then the passing game started to open up. Now they just line it back up in shotgun and, and and just going. You know they're throwing a the ball, they're setting it there, and that's just, just the name of the game. So you're right, man. The game has changed tremendously when it comes to that standpoint. But, to again, I'm going to add this. The reason why I keep saying the Baltimore Ravens is because they're playing a brand of football that no one's accustomed to doing anymore, right? They're not lining back. Look at them on the offensive side of the ball. They're finishing plays. They're lowering their shoulders. They're physical. On, on on both sides of the football, man. That's why I had a, the, the Ravens going all the way. Sean, you know, l before this year, Lamar had struggled in the playoffs and he had some disappointing losses. He really hadn't played a good game. I actually thought in the first half against Houston, like especially in the second quarter, I thought he looked a little tight just from an observer who never played. 
And then, for whatever reason, in the second half, he looked like that was the best he'd ever played in the playoffs, that second half. Do you think he's kind of a little more free now and relaxed? Or do you still think he has a lot of pressure to try to, you know, get to his first Super Bowl against uh, Mahomes? No, I, I noticed that as well. And, and look, you walk into the game with a tremendous amount of pressure, right? Because every athlete will tell you, and I, I don't read those clippings. I don't, I don't read the media. That's that's BS, right? We all know that. They, they're looking – and they're looking to see that, oh, man, people are saying that he can't get wins in the playoffs. He's struggling. He had not been there. I think Lamar Jackson's biggest issue he's had about the playoffs outside of the, the ones that he didn't play well on is just he hasn't been healthy. What, this is the first time we're seeing a, a healthy Lamar Jackson in a very long time, and that's scary. Really? So I, I think it's less about what he can do in the playoffs and more about just him walking into the games healthy now. Where he's not battling the ankle. He's not battling the knees. It, he's had these problems. And walking into a healthy and then too, look at his post game interviews. These guys are more focused. They're not even talking about Super Bowl. They're talking about the very next game, the very next play. They're, they're very focused and locked in, man. So this is a diff- this is a different Lamar Jackson than we've seen in a long time. Hey, Sean, the Chargers are looking for a new coach. Do you have a pick? Somebody's going to help us win, man. That's that's about it. Um, Do you prefer Hawk? You know, I think when Rabel's name is out there. I, I think this. Um, obviously, the fan favorite. Everybody wants Jim Harbaugh. Now, I even got in on the phone on social media, kind of joking around and whatnot. Um, I think the fans want Jim Harbaugh, and that's and that's fine because you know what he can do. Walking into a walking into the door, you got Justin Herbert and Cannon Island. You got an All Pro left tackle. You got Derwin James and Ke- uh, Khalil Mack Bosa. You got a squad, right? You got people that, that you know can go out and win football games right now. I just want to, you know, kind of think of the overall picture that if it just so happened that Jim Harbaugh didn't come there, Vrabel is my number two. Like, yeah. I just think that his, his mentality, because that, to me, in my opinion, the Chargers' biggest problem this year was their mentality and have an identity, which they didn't have either. Yeah. Uh, they got the guys there. They got pro bowlers. They got all pros. We, uh, Derwin James, Khalil Mack, me. Khalil Mack finished what was 17 sacks this year, so he's That's still crazy. going. But, but that is, that mentality that they once had, the mentality that we had of being dominant, we knew who we were. We wanted to show everybody else who we were. They didn't have that this year. And I think if Rabel, if Jim Harbaugh, if they couldn't get the deal done, which they should. I mean, this is a this is a match made in heaven. We know that Jim Harbaugh loves Justin Herbert. He's been public about that. He's he had a relationship with the Chargers about playing for him back in the day. Um, he wants to come to a big market, which is in L.A. Everything is lining up for Jim Harbaugh to be there. But I just – Chargers fans and just people around, I, I would not shy away from taking a real look at Vrabel if Jim Harbaugh didn't work out. Yeah, the Vrabel thing is, man, everywhere he goes, toughness follows. Mm. And the, you're right. The menu is loaded with incredible ingredients. I think that the biggest jump from last year to this year is going to be the Chargers, whoever takes the job, because I yeah. felt the coaching staff – was holding this team back from its true potential. They're going to need a new running back, though, right? Eckler looks like he's... Yeah, what happened to Eckler? He got old real fast. Messed them up. Yeah, he got... got, Yeah, he got... Eckler was banged up. Uh, But I think, too, and and I think that uh, Austin Eckler would agree to this, and I think he even said it a little bit publicly, you need two running backs in in this this business, man. You need two running backs that can have a one-two punch. Pollard, right, for the Cowboys, good. But, I mean, he wasn't as good when... um, you know, Zeke. when uh, Ezekiel Elliott was there. So you, you need that one-two punch combo. Somebody's going to take the load off of you and be able to stay fresh for a whole season. That's that's how you take away some reps. You add some endurance, add some quality runs. But if you just if you just pound the ball down down the field and you're relying on one running back to get it done, that's just not the way the game works anymore. Yeah. So I, my, there, there's this thing. You know, obviously we got Miles Garrett here. And um, you could give us some some insight on this. He seems to always start off well. Seems to start off with, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13 sacks. Uh, the last couple of years has not had uh, the, the production in the second half of the season. I think the last eight games he had like one sack or something. If you look at his career compared to the other great pass rushers in the league, his sack, I, I, obviously there's more, there's other things besides sacks, but if you just look at sacks, the other pass rushers in the top, top ones in the league in their career – don't have a noticeable drop off in month December month. and January. Yeah. Why is that? Miles Garrett has a noticeable drop off consistently in his career, and we we don't get it. 
I, I always say it this, and, and I'd say this the first day that I met Miles Garrett, I seen him in person. I was like, this dude is just a freakish athlete. Like if you see him in person, and I'm a you know, I'm a pretty big dude, man. So when I say that, I'm walking up next to somebody and I say, Man, this dude is a freakish athlete. My only gripe and my has always been really with Miles Garrett is the consistency to take over games, the consistency is a longevity, the consistency is of being that dude for you know 17 weeks. And that that is when you are a game changer. He can take over a game. We've seen him do it multiple times. This dude can – and you can't say that about a lot of people. He can single-handedly affect a football game just by him being on the field. And what happens is – and I was told this by Ray Lewis when I was, when I was you know, 17, 18 years old um, when I was at the university – when I was at the University of Maryland is that big players show up in big games and have big games against the big quarterbacks. That is when you kind of set the set the tone, and you start having your name mentioned up there with the greatness. So anytime I seen Peyton Manning or Tom Brady, any one of the Ben Roethlisberger, just go back and look how many sacks I have in these guys. And I was you know, I, that was instilled in my mind that you can't have a drop off later on during the season. You can't have a drop off in smaller moments. That AFC Championship game uh, that we had against the Patriots, I had two or three sacks in that game. You have to show up in those big games because. Nobody's going to remember those 15-plus sacks you had during the regular season. They're going to remember those turnovers that you had in critical moments. They're going to remember the sack force fumbles that you had, or they had to throw it fast because you got the offensive lineman thrown up in the quarterback's face. And so they'll remember those things. They're not going to remember everything else. So I hope that Miles Garrett legacy, whatever he decides to get done, is not that he was just a great player during the regular season, though he was a good player for Cleveland. He needs to go down as one of the greats because he has the capabilities of doing it, but it's really up to him to keep it consistent. Sean, you know, first of all, shout out to your new, your lights out uh, event. First, it's on a very important day, probably the biggest day of the year. February 16th, Tyvus will be turning 30 years old that day. <laughs> so that's a really good job out of you for doing it on the be- the biggest holiday on this year. Um, talk about that event, who's fighting, and how was the last fight with the two girls? Or the two women, I should say. Women, women. Yeah, well, I, so we, we ended up moving our Coleman event. The girl fight didn't happen. Uh, the other one didn't. She didn't make weight, and she kind of pulled out the last one. But it was fortunate because our, our main event with uh, uh, Nick, uh, Nakatani was our biggest fight that we've ever had. Um, and this car, we're coming right right now with Tommy Aaron. Tommy Aaron, the guy with the belt across his uh, shoulders, Tony Fer- Ferguson's guy. Tony's at our fights a lot. To the right of him is Alba Morales. Um, he fought the UFC before he, he's trying to get back to the UFC. He's fighting on this card as well. Uh, we got AJ Hodgkins, man. It's also, he's going to open, open the card up on the amateurs tonight. He, he played linebacker at, uh, at Oregon. So, uh, we, we got a, we got a big one. This one, we're already, I think about 50 or 60% sold out online. And we've never done that this far away from the fight in the company. Um, and we just have, you know, massive jumps on football TV, football sports, and after this fight, man, we got some really big announcement where we're going to have the opportunity with, with bigger distribution and, and shown practically all over the world. So uh, I think it's, it's just really cool for us because we got the next up and coming superstars. I, I think the two of these guys on this card alone are probably go to the UFC right when they're done with us. Um, but we got some big announcements coming uh, for 2024. Sean, what's the what's the weights and for the classes? You know, like how do you, what's the weights that you got to be to be to fight each other? Well, we, you know, we got the one, 147 pounders, we got 170 pounders, 205s. I mean, one, you know, we, we have, a, I think, five different weight classes. Okay, so you we're know, like, so weight. like right now, I'm like, I'm 240. Where would that mm-hmm. put me at? Like, what's my range that I can find? You're too heavy. I, I would, 241. I would, no. Yeah, I wouldn't go to I wouldn't go to heavyweights for you. I, I would try to drop as much as I could. You, you know what? Well, well, no, no, well, well, the reason <laughs> reason being is because I think I just started this on the set. We can break the record of like the biggest fight ever. Me versus you would sell out and we Dude, make a bunch killed, of money. Man. Listen, no, I wouldn't. No, Sean I would just see that's the thing. No you don't, offense, you bro, don't, you y'all don't trust me. Seconds. Y'all don't trust me. No, we love you. You you don't think I can hang? You don't think I can hang over here? Look, look, I think he'll show up. You seen you seen the uh, video, the guy, the bell ring, he just jumped right out the ring and leaves. I, I saw that. I did not things. see that. Oh, it was I hilarious. Did that. <laughs> did not, did not it was funny that. because the commentator was I would was never like, do that. <laughs> hey, don't blink during this fight because if you blink, you might miss it. He's won his last five fights and four of them were real? almost immediately. <laughs> Ding ding, and this dude got out the ring and left. I'm cool. Hey. Oh my god! I'm Where upset. was this? It was. I saw it yesterday online somewhere. <laughs> That's crazy. It's the, it's the real deal. I couldn't believe that happened. 
But look, there's a cage, so you got to do some climbing to get out that cage. That's it ain't right. the ring. So you might be short on that. I think. I, listen, I think with the right with the right trainers, man. Listen, I put on a couple more pounds. Sean, I think I, I, I can. Nick Day's lights out, Tyvis. What yeah, that mean? I, Sean, about, about, they about to call about me about lights on. Fly. What you mean? Yeah. <laughs> what you mean? They gonna, gonna have to cut the lights on. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Sean. He um, he does a little gimmick where he uh, competes against athletes at Ohio State and other sports. Oh uh, yeah. And I'm Ty- a former wrestler, Ty- so I, was, I watched with great interest when he decided to get on the mat with a very renowned Ohio State wrestler. And if I, to I say my- he got his ass kicked, whoa, I'm I, being nice. I ha- I handle my own. No, you didn't. I handle my. Which one are you talking about? The one that you sent me. I watched the heavy it. or the light. I think it was a smaller dude. He oh, yeah, yeah. I handled my own on that one. No, what you, you mean? Hell I handled my own. Well, <laughs> and they, they said the, the eye in the sky don't lie, so I need yeah, to see that film. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. tries on YouTube. Hey, Sean, Look it up. Luck with the fight. Uh, we hope it works out well, and uh, we're glad to hear big things are happening for your for your company. It sounds great. You got it, man. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right, man. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Sean, uh, Sean I'll send you the uh, link to the Tyvis video yeah, if you want to watch you it. You get some uh, okay. feedback. And then, I, and then make a video for Make sure you watch some Make tape. a video for us critiquing his performance. <laughs> make sure you watch Let, let me just tape. say this. He doesn't know what a sprawl is, okay? He doesn't have... It's a, all natural uh, ability. He doesn't know how to cross face. He had opportunities. He just didn't know what he was doing. See? Hey, but look. Not, a lot of these guys go do a couple CrossFit uh, practices and think it's legit. <laughs> so that's <laughs> they flip, flip, flip a couple of tires. Man, I listen, say, I, listen. I'm surprised you're 240 tires. Dang, bro. Thanks, Sean. We appreciate you, man. That's why I'd have him at 240.